Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's been 22 years since Nigeria's return to democracy, and a lot has happened. The good, the bad, and of course the ugly. The liberalization of the telecommunications sector brought boundless opportunities, which is one thing that we can record as a good thing. But Nigeria is yet to ensure adequate power supply. Inflation is hitting record levels and there is insecurity in many parts of the country. Those are obviously bad. An ugly trend that has also trailed us from independence is ethnic division. This has led to accusations of marginalization and even inter-ethnic battles. Joining us this morning to look at the state of the nation is the National Publicity Secretary of Ones Ndigbo Worldwide, Mr. Alex Ogbonaya. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you on the program. It's a, it's a very critical time in Nigeria's history, uh, uh, this period. And of course, also conversations on Igbo presidency, conversation on IPOB as, uh, you know, attacks in the southeast. Um, there's so much that seems to be going on at the same time. We're also dealing with um, a very, very, um, you know, strenuous economy, um, health care, education, all of it, you know, in the same conversation. Um, but what would you describe, in, from your perspective, as the current state of our nation? Um, so any Nigerian patriot, uh, the, what is going on in the country is very, very painful. It's very painful uh, because, uh, especially when some of us who are aging, and we reflect on our, the future of our children, the future of our grandchildren. If the trend continues like this, what is likely to be the, the future will be very bleak. I, I passed out of, out of secondary school in 1975, almost six months after I got employed. And uh, we didn't all persons within our own age mates. It, it, it was like that. And uh, by now, people who graduate from university, they will not have work. Even when you have work, what they pay you is not enough to take care of your uh, basic uh, needs. If at all you get the job. So, and this is part of the reasons why you have rising insecurity all over parts of uh, Nigeria. It's painful. And uh, what Ohanese has set out to do is to suggest solutions to some of these problems that uh, have become endemic in Nigeria. If you listen to the president of Ohanese and the Professor Ambassador George Ogioso yesterday and through the week, he will discover that they have been preparing solutions. So, Ohanese stands as an institution that we have to provide solution to some of the problems that uh, um, uh, are available in this country. All right. Thank well, you. Would, would you share with us some of these uh, solutions? We're going to go back into talking about other issues, but share with us some of the solutions, one or two that um, uh, Professor um, Giorgio Biozo has mentioned. Ambassador, I beg your, beg your pardon. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, part of the solution is that Nigeria is yearning for creative leadership. Nigeria is yearning for creative leadership. Nigeria is yearning for justice. Nigeria is yearning for appropriate security network. Uh, so these are the kind of things we looked at. If you look at uh, Nigeria from the point of justice, you see that justice somewhere is uh, injustice somewhere is injustice everywhere. And if you are going to equity go with clean hands. I've never seen a system where injustice has ever helped for any group of people to grow. So like what is happening in the South is uh, that a lot of our boys are very angry. The agitation is on the injustice on the South is uh, in various forms. And so we have, been we have been asking the presidency and in fact the federal government to address the injustice in the South East or to the people of the South East. It is believed that when they begin to address some of these injustices, then uh, a lot of our youth will no longer be angry and the level of agitation will reduce. Okay. Talking about these agitations, you know, yesterday we saw uh, Barrister Augustine Amechi, the president of our Nese in Nibu of the 19 northern states and the FCT, saying that an Igbo president is the solution to agitations in Nigeria. Please, how is this so? Yeah, uh, I think I, have, I didn't listen to him. I, I didn't listen to him, but I'm sure that all Nigerians 
are on one page about Igbo resourcefulness, Igbo creativity, Igbo ingenuity, Igbo tenacity, and Igbo capacity to change uh, nothing to something. You know, so I think all Nigerians agree on that. So we are looking at, I think by, by 2023, and it will take up the leadership of this country. Uh, this uh, you see prosperity, you see transformation, you see uh, interest will be joyful, and uh, uh, all these complaints we have about uh, agitation here and there will drastically reduce. So I think that's what I'm going to be talking about. And of course, that is known to all, every Nigerian. The only problem is that they know the truth, they don't want to apply it. Uh, so uh, it is very clear. Every person you know, is talking the same way because Nigerians also know it. Uh, so just like a, a, a while ago, sometime ago, about two weeks ago, PDP came out from their meeting and said that the, the presidency can come from any part of the country, there's no zoning, there's no rotation. You know, but they know that the truth is, and agreed in 1998, is that there will be rotation of power between the north and the south. It was PDP under that reached that understanding. You know, now that it's almost the time for the South is that taking about you no know, zoning again, no rotation, and leadership can come from and the president can come to any part of the country. Isn't just it on the side of PDP? And we have sacrificed all the efforts for PDP in the past and even the present. You know, when when Buhari was going for his election, remember that almost Southeast people voted PDP. I cannot support that going to PDP. For them to even contrive the idea of that crazy can come from anywhere, it's a great sense of injustice to the people of South East Nigeria. Okay. All these are sources of agitation. Are you then and saying that, that uh, um, Mr. Obuna, are you then saying that, you know, if the APC uh, presents the possibility of, um, you know, an Igbo presidency, uh, the Ones and Igbo might, you know, encourage Southeasterners to vote uh, in the, the APC in the next elections? Oh, uh, sincerely speaking, Ones and Igbo doesn't work eloquent about political parties. I had my foundation PDP, but right now I don't belong to any political party. So we are interested in any party that addresses the need of Igbo. Igbo will join that party. I think that the APC zones their presence on the South East. Evidently, 99% of Igbo will embrace the APC and support the APC. Okay. And not only in the Igbo land, all over Nigeria and all over the world. Because it's like, it's, it's, it's the light at the end of the short the tunnel. It's becoming clear that Igbo need transformative leadership, visionary leadership, creative leadership. And more importantly, sometimes they turn around the economy and give it a positive direction and momentum. Now what Nigerians are looking for. And they know that Igbo, they have, Igbo have people with all the, with the expected credential that we have to turn around Nigeria. All right, so Mr. Abunaya, if at the end of the day, both the ruling and opposition parties do not zone the presidential ticket to the Southeast, what next? Uh, what next is that the, it will hurt the position of Oganese and Igbo so much. It will hurt us so much. It will hurt us so much. It will hurt us because the our youth we were asking them to hold on we are asking them to accept patience we were asking them that you shall be aware we're asking them that you would negotiation and discussion on the table uh, bargaining on the table that we'll be able to achieve uh, some of these evil needs uh, so if by 2023 they don't do it they will in fact rise against all of us it is very much unfortunate for some of us who have been asking it to hold on. It will appear that they have been right all over, all over and that we, the elders, have been wrong. It will create more problems in the Southeast. I'm telling you, that's the problem. that is the likely solution. The agitation will increase, the secessionists will increase in activity. You know, whatever you call insecurity will increase, not just in Southeast, but all over Nigeria. Okay. That, that brings me to my next question, Mr. Abunaya. If you're saying that, you know, if at the end of the day by 2023, no political party zones to the southeast, you know, agitations will increase, secessionists will increase and all of that. Let's look at the activities of some southeast groups like, you know, Masob, IPOB, you know, all the activities, you know, clamoring for, you know, a separate Biafra nation. How do you think, you know, these agitations it might hurt or impact, you know, the, the desire of the Southeast for an Igbo presidency? 
Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, the, the point of that con convergence between the IPOB, MASOB on one hand, and on the other, the point of convergence, or rather the points of convergence are very, very much more than the very point of divergence. The point of convergence that we are all evil. The point of convergence that we are all agitating for justice. We all are agitating that the injustice being made out of us is too much. We all are agitating that our children should find a, a job opportunities, and that should be equal treatment, a level, play, a level field, a level, a level playing field that will help children manifest in various ways. Mr. Gunnaya, um, now, Mr. Gunnaya, now I wanted to clarify. Let, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Let I wanted finish. to clarify let my question, actually. I understand you. Just hold on. Okay. So that's the point of convergence. So the very point of divergence is the approach by our youth. That is the point of divergence, the approach by the youth. So that divergence now will come closer and become a point of convergence by the time the Nigeria says, no, they are bringing justice to this great set of people. We are not giving them presidency. I hope you understand for the nation. So every point, there will be tribulation galore. And whatever you hear about I pop myself and so on, it will be there for us to manage them. And you'll be surprised if all these things will end. So any person who doesn't see sense in it, because it is good that point of uh, 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 agitation. Uh, that in fact, they always tell you that they were, we are foolish to believe that the person will give it to us. So, but if by God's grace is God, if we get it, we discover that we have more reason to compare them to stop whatever they are doing against them. Uh, uh, so you uh, think so that the that. you think that the the mass of you know IPOB agitations for a separate Biafra nation it will automatically end once there's an Igbo president in power. If what is important to the Southeast people, call them IPOB, call them mass of, call them whatever whatever nomenclature you use, is that people should find food on the table, not just in Igbo land but in Nigeria. Not just in Igbo land, but the whole Nigeria. Go to Alaba, go to Oshodi, go to everywhere. You find poor people that unemployed youth. The only thing is that these other people have said, no, things must change. They are, you know, a lot of people talking about restructuring and so on. So what we are saying is that if the economy changes, if the, if the, if the dynamic changes, that is what we may call a uh, uh, cause and effect. Okay. So what is happening today is the effect of the core of the problem. So the moment the, the dynamic, the paradigm changes, the effect will also change. Agitation will change. Okay. What you call I pop myself and all this other proliferation of personal group will also change. It is very clear. Okay. It is very mathematical. Um, well, we'll see how that plays out. You know, we'll also see the possibilities of any of these major political parties. Um, um, you know, picking a uh, person of the Southeast to be their running um, uh, candidate in 2023. Uh, but I want us to stay in the Southeast and talk about um, political leadership of the Southeast. For a long time, they've been criticized uh, for the ways that they have run the affairs of the Southeast. And I'm talking now of traditional rulers, the governors, um, and of course, even, you know, me members of the National Assembly, the whole Igbo political leadership. Do you think that they currently have one house and speak with one voice with regards 2023? Uh, do you think that they are all on the same page? You, you, there's also been issues with uh, APGA um, in Anambra State and the need for Igbos to have one political umbrella that covers all of them. So how would you rate the political leadership of the Southeast um, and um, where it currently stands? Well, uh the pressure of one SND will address this issue about two days ago. The, when the people talk about talking with one voice, there's never one voice in India, even in heaven, even among the angels. When the angels were there, they, had, they didn't have one voice. That's why I have a Gabriel and Michael, then you say, Ask Lucifer. In the paradise, our Lord, you know, you still have Abel and Cain. We uh, have what, uh, what do you call it? Jacob and then he's born in so. Yeah, no, boom. There are now been one voice anywhere. You know, but what is happening among the cacophony of voices, the God has given us the rational 
and discernible mind to identify what we want at any given is for, for people to make use of their reasoning to, to know what they want at any given time. So in the southeast, there might be cacophony of voices, but the greater majority, what I may call 80% or more, will always align with the one that is uh, more positive. But it is not easy to achieve one voice. No, no, no. It has no even southwest, northwest, north central. It, there is no one voice anywhere. Okay. But what is important is that by the time people articulate their views in various ways, we the either we stay one place and harmonize it towards towards the common interests of people. All okay. right. Um, so we don't really have that any problem in Southeast Nigeria. The weight of one if you go to any place in Kano, so go to anywhere. You see that there's no community, you don't have people having uh, what they may call meeting, town union you know, meeting, and so on and so forth. There's no group in Nigeria that is are united as equal people. But when you look at all from outside, they think we are we're not divided. Okay, so Mr. Ogunaya, in that... In that light, Mr. Ogunaya, anyway, so I that say the is everywhere. Mr. Ogunaya, Mr. Ogunaya, all right, Mr. Ogunaya, apologies to Button. Apologies to Button at this time, but really, you, you mentioned that, you know, you can never have one voice. There's always a divergence of voices, but that we need to focus on the positives. So let's look at the positives now. Um, when we talk about Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency, we need to be talking about the characters, the political figures involved. You know, so which political figures, which names would you say, uh, you know, should be in the forefront, you know, running for presidency come 2023? Uh, I hope you are, I hope you are, you are, I hope you, there's no Nigerian, no Nigerian without the capacity of Igbo. So present even 100 um, people that have the profile for leadership of the country within even the shortest possible time. It is not in doubt. The first vice chancellor of Ibadan of Ibadan, you know, Nigerian Bajan was Igbo. And Ibadan, I won't even go that side. But if you look at Igbo, we have people that are very enormous in intellect, in capacity, in industry, in whatever, in politics, people that are dynamic. And have served this country in various capacities. So, so, so which of we them are can you name? to begin to name them. But because we know, we, you, you know, there are so many. So, when the chiefs are down, you will see them. But what is important is this we have, as we have about 10 political parties, if political parties nominate their candidate from the party, then we sit together to harmonize among them that is the best, of course, from the, and to support that person to win. Okay. That's the issue. All right. Um, we would like you to also share your views on um, moving away from the southeast. Now, let's look at the, the, the Nigerian state, um, you know, how the current administration, President Mohamed Buhari, and uh, the government has uh, run the affairs of the country in the last six years. Uh, would you say that, you know, they you know, have done well so far? You know, but of course, 2023 can be better. Or would you say that it has, you know, not been as, as well as uh, you had expected? Well, I don't want to sound negative all the while. Uh, first of all, let me start with Second Niger Bridge. Uh, I was there at Onisha to see the Second Niger Bridge. We are there, we commended the president over that. I was there to see the upliftment of uh, Akanu Ibrahim International Airport. We commended the president over that. I've tried through Enugu to Paracourt about last week. I commend the president over that. Anyone is receiving attention, I commend the president over that. There are a lot of pluses you can think about. You know, I commend the president over that. But in spite, of, in spite of all the commendations, you know, what is the work of our Naira today? What is unemployment today? <laughs> what, is the, what is the future of the country today? What is this, the violence level in country today? And what is the poverty index of the country today? You know, so having commended the president, these are things that are self-evident. Uh, I don't even require my comment because you yourself have seen them. I hope you understand. No, oh, yeah, I, I guess that we do, and um, you know, we're looking forward to the next what the next two years brings, and uh, seeing uh, what happens next. I quickly also share your thoughts. The uh, Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, has uh, um, you know come against uh, the United Kingdom government. Um, in the conversation of granting asylum to IPOB and MASOB members. 
Um, he has described it as um, you know, derailing the fight against terrorism. Uh, what does Ones Ndigbo you know, say about this? Yeah, Ones Ndigbo's position is very clear. The federal government invited, he's talking about meeting the Boko Haram to discuss with them, talking about amnesty, talking about even infusing them into the armed forces of Nigeria, uh, reaching an understanding with bandits, about terrorists of all kinds. The federal government is in, inclined to that. Then we are saying, if, uh, why not in that type of, I know the basis of their uh, agitation. So that's the, that's the position of one area. We have made it known that all these were our children. Very soon I will celebrate my city. Every other person who is out for the out for the party, they are all our boys, they are children. You know, so we cannot, we, do, we have been advising them not to leave themselves and Igbo in the harm's way. But that doesn't mean that we are not their fathers. So the, whatever, the death of an Igbo pains me. Pay say all of us. I hope you understand. So they are our children, and you know what I want to call in the Christianity what we call repentance. Repentance is like when somebody changes their lifestyle and then brings the other. You know what we are only looking for in IPOB is no. Please come to us, talk with us. Let us hear you. Professor Obi also told that the answer is beyond you. So if you are one of us, come to us. That's the only point we are. So as a father, I told them they don't come. Uh, but that's the only thing we are asking for. So we'll be able to have business of understanding. But you can see, the act of our business, the governors, our business, the girls, our business world, uh, embarrassing over the mother and this and that. These are the areas where we bring them repent and maybe come for us to reach out to have a common understanding. Their pain is our pain. And uh, so that's, the, that's my response to that. Uh, lastly, if you can do this in 30 seconds, what exactly would you describe as what's going on in the southeast with the constant attacks on security facilities? The police stations have been attacked. A prison was broken into. Um, and even yesterday we, or two days ago, we spoke once again of another assault at a police sta um, uh, station. Uh, what would you say is going on? Uh, is this, you know, from the IPOB? Is this from the ESN? Or are there certain groups in the Southeast that the government may not be aware of? Okay, now, um, we've answered this question before. Let me see if we can clarify it. You see, when a crime occurs anywhere, the first thing is to examine the nature of the crime and possibly you know, look at various persons or groups that may have or suspects, various persons or groups that you can conduct as suspect. Then begin to eliminate as much as we refer to the capacity of the persons or groups to carry out such crimes. So the best type of method by which one can come, evade the police station, disarm everybody, he overwhelmed them and perhaps burn, move on, and the police station, so prison, for example, open the prison gate and there will be jailbreak. That is a sophisticated form of uh, uh, crime. I hope you understand. It's sophisticated terrorism. Who, do, who are the people? The arena has in, which group has the capacity to carry out such uh, ter terrorist act? Is it the uh, vigilante? Is it uh, IPOP? Is it MASOP? Is it uh, Boko Haram? Is it who? So this thing requires investigation before we conclude. The former the general police said is uh, IPOP. IPOP said, oh, no, 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 we are not the people. I hope you understand. So we say required investigation, but I want you to look at the capacity of a group to overwhelm a police station and also burn that. It's not easy. You know, I'm living anywhere and I have police central police, anywhere uh, police uh, headquarters. You think of a group of people that will come down and uh, overwhelm all of them. You know, you must have you must have the sophistication to be able to do it. So that's what we are looking at. In fact, it's a, it's a source of worry. But I'm asking for detailed investigation before we come to conclusion. Oh, Apple right. had denied it. ESN had denied it. And um, uh, we think Indeed. we must investigate for that. Thank you worried. very much, because sir. Because before then, about three months ago, South East was the most secure part of the zone in Nigeria. All right. Alex Bunaya, thank you very much uh, for speaking with us this morning.
And uh, just to quickly note that we are also going to be having similar conversations with um, publicity secretaries of um, other uh, groups across Nigeria. But thanks for your time this morning, Mr. Abunayam. Yes, have Thank a great you. day. All right. Thank Okay, so April is a Sexual uh, Assault Awareness Month. We'll be speaking about that after this break. <laughs>